Hello? Okay, in this second example, we continue to explore the use of LifeRack. In this case, uh, we're going to use the HMO HIV uh, dataset. Uh, so first, let's read it, the dataset in and uh, print it out. Just take a look. Uh, so it has uh, ID, time, age, drug, censoring variable, end date, and uh, enter date and end date. Okay. So the first um, thing we do is uh, we graph the survival time. Just take a, a visual of what the survival data look like. Okay, the survival time. And we do a graph by time by age and uh, uh, against the censoring variable. So this is the plot of time by age identified by sensing variable. So the <coughs> sensing variable is zero, uh, then we get the red dots, and if it's the sensing variable is one, then we get the plus sign. And if you can see the age variable, um, we have uh, from 20 to uh, like a 50, 55, and uh, so seems. Um, you know, with increasing the age, the survival time uh, goes down. And uh, seems uh, the non-censored uh, group has uh, uh, larger, uh, uh, has uh, uh, survival time uh, when uh, age gets larger. So there's some uh, differences, and uh, it just show the both groups show a trend uh, that decreasing, the survival time decreasing with age. So then we can use an exponential regression model uh, with only age in the model. So we want to take a look at the age fact. So here you get the parameter estimate. Uh, since we're using the uh, exponential, so we're forcing the Webull distribution to have a shape variable 1. Um, and uh, also the Lagrange multiplier test is really to testing the scale parameter or the intercept 0 equal to 0 or not, uh, which here we uh, get a larger p-value. So uh, we can assume uh, the uh, intercept uh, or the scale parameter uh, should be 0. And uh, once we have the parameter estimate, you get the intercept, and you get the um, you know this uh, coefficient for age. Then you can actually construct the regression equation. So it is the uh, t survival time equal to the exponential of 5.859 minus 0 0.0939 times age. So we can plot the raw and fitted survival time against the age. So here we calculate the t hat in using the fitted regression uh, model, and then we sort the data by age, and then we set up uh, you know the parameters for the graphs. We call GP plot, and we plot time by age one and age zero, uh, and then. Uh, t hat by h, and we overlay this graph together. So take a look. So we have a fitted uh, exponential survival curve. Okay. So um, then we say uh, we want to add some covariates to see if it improves the model fit. So one thing is we can adjust for drug, the another variable, drug variable, into uh, the, try another web with, uh, exponential uh, regression using drug as a covariate. Uh, and we can see the model fit. We get the AIC to be 297.587. 
and uh, uh, previously 284.010 so uh, seems it's, uh, it's a drug uh, covered actually has a, a little bit higher AIC okay so then we say what if we just put both in there age and drug and then you can see now if you put that in then the model fit now it goes down to 60 six right so here it was 297 and here is 284 with both of them the AIC drops to 266 so seems it's uh, improving the model fit okay and then uh, if we want to look closer using a uh, graphic method then the proc life test actually uh, we can use the proc left test to generate the fitted CDF and then we can generate the so-called Cox snail residual uh, from the fitted model using proc left rec with age and the drug as the independent variables and if we our model is good then uh, when we compare the fitted CDF uh, that is non-parametric uh, uh, maximum life estimate and then against uh, the Cox snail residual then they should be pretty much on the on the straight line okay so here this is the chunk we use uh, life rec putting both variables in uh, taking into consideration of censoring and output to the exponentials uh, and the CDF and then we use a data step um, so to uh, calculate another Cox snail um, residual, so it's a net negative log of one minus f, and then we use the life test procedure to calculate uh, the um, Kaplan-Meier estimate for survival survival distribution, and then we uh, reset. We use a data step and uh, calculate the neg negative natural log survival time we calculate it and then we set up the parameter for the graphics and we use uh, GP plot we plot uh, the log transform survival time from uh, life test and then against uh, Cox uh, and against Cox itself okay the Cox snail residual okay and we overlay on the two graphs. Uh, so as you can see they agree um, relatively well when the residuals are small but then it's a start to have a departure you know when the uh, residuals uh, grow larger. So we can do the same for Webull distribution. So here we did a what exponential? Now we can do a Webull distribution uh, using a similar uh, idea and draw eventually draw a graph to take a look if it's closer to a straight line. Uh, this time, uh, still, uh, when its uh, residual becomes larger, the hazard, uh, then you get accumulative hazard, then you uh, it's a deviate uh, from a straight line. But now this is a kind of uh, under the, the straight line. At the beginning, um, where is it? Oh. Uh, anyway, um, we have another plot uh, by yeah, here. At the beginning, it's above the straight line, and now it's below the straight line. And we can do another for log logistic regression model. And uh, again, all the way to generating the uh, residual plot. And this time it's uh, similar to the first exponential. Okay. So probably the Webull uh, model uh, is uh, probably better uh, from the residual graph. Okay. Okay, uh, that's a good exercise uh, for using the PROC life rec and try to evaluate the model fit uh, by using graphs. Thank you.